All right, hello everybody. Today, I'm gonna to take a break on trying to figure out the low output problem. And I want to quickly figure out how to get the FET board working. So um, I am going to turn the amp on and check the voltage at the input uh, and see what I'm getting there. That'll be my first step because what I'm gonna do is then desolder that power connection with the amp off, obviously, pull this board out, and then I'm gonna provide that power with my power supply instead, because that's what it needs is DC voltage at that level. And we can, but we'll have the actual board out here where we can look at it and play with it and figure things out. So we're going to first and just turn this back on for a minute. Now, part of the reason I feel safe saying this there is it's completely rubber and plastic and protected, so there should be no reason this is dangerous. But um, while that's warming up, I will come over here and I'm getting, interesting, I'm getting 290 volts on this side of that, which would kind of make sense. But I go down to the other side. Oh, interesting. I've only got like, maybe I'm not getting that well. I'm getting like, oh, 8.9 volts. So that's dropping me down to 8 volts. So uh, we will try connecting in basically to that point once we get it pulled out and put in about 8 volts and see what we can get. So I'll go ahead and shut that back off. Uh, I will make sure the caps have drained all of their power out. We'll come back in a second. I'm going to basically have this guy pulled up and out and zoomed in a little bit more so you can see me troubleshooting now. So we'll be back in just a minute. All right, so now we are looking at this guy. I don't have the power on yet. Um, I've got it to 8.1 volts because that's what we were getting and I'm connecting it into that point. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to try and see if I can't um, get some semi-decent checks of if I turn it on, if the signal is getting through, etc. So right now I've got the output, the input you can see is connected. Actually, let me, I'm gonna have to zoom out for just a second because I want you guys to see the oscilloscope up here, which you can now see is actually showing signal coming through. That's just at the input right here. So I've got it connected to what's called the gate or the drain, which would be after the output. Uh, where we should be coming out with signal uh, and then we're gonna I'm gonna basically power this on and see if we get signal out there If not, I'll try and probe around a little bit. So we'll go ahead and turn this input on So I don't see anything coming in the blue up above So what we're gonna do now is I'll go ahead and zoom back in with this so you guys can see a little closer what I'm looking at Focus that in and basically so what I want to see is I do have I should have still eight volts right here. Ah, so I'm trying to touch that. Yes, I do. That jumps across. On the other side of it, I have 0.7 volts. Um, which is, let's see, I'm trying to kind of figure out where I'm at with this, this guy as well. Now that's the 10K resistor. Um, I'm, I'm, so what I might do is just raise this up another volt and see if I get it more. So, so what I'm trying to figure out is I've got like right now there's a 150K dropping resistor. That may be dropping too much, I don't know. But um, so I will try and raise the voltage up just a little bit more. So we'll raise it up to, um, uh, let's see, 9.0 volts. And we'll check there. And we get I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see that below, but I'm just, just letting you see what I'm probing. I'm getting 8.99 there. On the other side, ah, it's hard for me to probe this very well. I'm getting still 0.7 volts. Uh, let's try 10 volts. And let's see what we get over here. It's still 0.7 volts, so it's dropping the same amount across there. It doesn't seem to be working, so that makes me wonder. Let's go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to have to kind of review then. Let's try and look at the schematic and see if we can understand if there's something that we're doing wrong here. So I'm going to temporarily disconnect this guy. We're going to kind of rotate this around. I've got voltage turned off as well, but I'll move those out of the way. So I'm going to let So one of the things I'm seeing is this is the input point normally. And it had about 250 or 300 volts right here. It jumps across over here and drops down to about 8 volts. Now, the 8 volts may be just because it's drawing so much current throughout the amp, or through this this uh, through this guy. Um, wow, that, I'm curious. That looks a little heated. Maybe I just got soldering iron close to it. Um, so we're going to follow kind of the lines of this. I'm going to talk through it while looking at the schematic so that it makes sense. So we've got 150K coming in, and I'll have this showing up. Sorry, I'm going to block you guys for just a minute, but I need to get the schematic where I can see it a little bit better. So we've got 
150K to water that's right here that drops it down and it was about eight volts here. That then connects into a 100 microfarad 50 volt and an 8.2K resistor to ground. So that's also creating a little bit of voltage drop on that 8.2. It's possible I might need to change that to be a little bit less of a drop, but, uh, and then that's jumpering over to a 10K right here, which connects in to the drain, which I can see up here. And the drain is the output. The drain then has a 4.7 uh, that jumps over. Oh, you know what? I might want to look at that. I might actually be touching that. Yeah, that could be part of my problem. I can't tell for sure, but I'm, this the lead here might be touching this lead, which is ground. So it might just be grounding all the signal straight to earth. Um, let me check continuity test really quickly. Let's go to continuity mode. And I don't want there to be continuity between this, this ground point and this. Okay, so... Let me just get that. No, and no, all right. But I am getting it where it's supposed to be, there. So let me just test that. Okay. So effectively, it's possible that was a problem, but we'll look again in a minute. But what I wanna look at now is, um, uh, let me see, I'm trying to see if I can make that a little bit more visible for you guys. So, I'm just kind of going back through and tracing the schematic again, so let me just talk this through. Uh, that jumps over to the to the um, drain, which is kind of the anode in this case, and then that jumps through this 4.7 tantalum over to the output, which comes through here and then off to there. So what we need to see, it obviously, is you know the signal coming out around there, and we'll get the scope on that and hopefully see that in a minute again. So that looks good, uh, and that is a 10K. I remember that. All right, so let's just double-check some of our other things. The input comes through this, this mica, 100 picofarad mica and a 1 meg resistor into and connected to a 3.3 meg to ground, which I can see, to what should be the gate. Let me double check the picture. I will show you the picture also on this screen in the edit later, but this is the picture of the uh, this guy uh, of the uh, the pinout. So that's supposed to connect to the gate, and the gate is this guy over here, and that is correct, okay? And then the case goes straight to ground, and the source then comes over, and I've got to look at that. The source connects to an 8.2K resistor and a 4.7 microfarad to ground, which it does. So all that looks connected correctly. So one of the things that I've been told that you need to calculate is how to bias this correctly, and the way that's supposed to work uh, that I looked up was for a slightly different schematic. So I think part of my problem might be uh, that I... Um, yeah, I'm just, I mean, I've not biased this kind of stuff before or played with this stuff before. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what voltage is supposed to be coming in at that point. So I will uh, do a little bit of playing around with things uh, and see if I can get any ideas of what that's supposed to be, and I'll come back with you in a little bit. I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I finally, it dawned on me, I'm going to show you a picture here, but I had the thing in backwards or, or upside down. So I had been looking at this picture, but it was a bottom view of it. That was why it wasn't working. It finally realized it because I was doing a lot of different probing and I touched the case and to ground and I expected it to go beep and it didn't. It had 8.2K to ground. That's when it dawned on me. I had it all wired up wrong. So I pulled everything back out, rewired it. And if you look now, it's quite different. But um, what I'm going to do again now is I'm going to turn on the voltage, eight volts to it. I have the signal output coming out, but let me go ahead and get my clips clipped in here. So we had one clip connected to the input and that's showing signal, but now I want to clip a clip to the output. I'm getting output. Oh yeah. So look at this. If I clip my clip to the output, I now have, oops. So now I have a very strong, very strong signal coming out. So what I want to do now is dial that down a little bit though, because it's also coming in really hot. It's at um, uh, clipping pretty heavily. So I will get in here. It looks like I, I melted the top of this guy a little bit, but we'll dial down the output a little bit. Oh wait, I'm on the, huh? I am on the, not the right spot for the actual output now. That's just where it comes out of the, out of the actual thing. 
So I'll click to there, and I can adjust the output here. But it actually doesn't remove that kind of squashed top. So maybe that's part of what needs to be biased correctly, I guess. So we are getting output, that's a good sign. Um, but let's check some voltages. So let's go back to volts, let's get my clips hooked up right. And we will connect this here. We will connect my voltage here. And we'll check, what are we getting out at this end here? Eight volts, that's expected. Then I come down to this leg. I'm getting negative 0.2, this leg, negative something or other. I'm trying to look, where does that go? Uh, right here. So I'm getting nearly zero volts there at that. But I guess that may be because it's dropping all through the actual device. So that is a good sign. I actually have output that I would expect uh, roughly where it's at. Um, and it looks like to me, though, the only thing I don't like is how uh, distorted that looks. But maybe it's just because the input is coming in a bit too strong. Oh, yeah, there we go. So if I have the input down to about 100 millivolts, which is, you know, fairly low, then it comes out okay. But if not, as soon as we kind of get this up a little higher, which it'll start clipping a little bit. And so that'll give me a little bit of drive, you know, in through to this guy. So at any rate, we're gonna, I'm gonna shut off really quickly now, re-put this guy back into circuit, re-solder in its connection into the 150K dropper. Uh, we're gonna see what we get and if we get output of it. So back in a short minute here. All right, so I still have very soft output, but I did get it working. Here's the FET input. Sorry, guitar's out of tune, but. And then we go to this one, and this is the standard input, and you'll hear it's a little softer. So now another thing I noticed, and I'll have to come back to later, we're gonna do this maybe in another video, but when I started getting this squealing was when I had the volume up a bit. We're gonna get the volume up. Now you hear it, right? Touching the output transformer changes that. So I'm not sure what that means other than potentially the output transformer is having problems. So I'll have to come back to that later and figure that out. Maybe I have a bad output transformer, which will kind of suck because you know, a new one's about 80. 90 bucks, but uh, I will try and spend some more time troubleshooting other ideas that might potentially be related to it. But for now, we'll call that a video. We've got one more thing working and the FET works great. And so from there, we will call this another good troubleshooting session done. Uh, so hopefully if everybody understands that, it's just that I basically, I'll even show it on screen for a second. This is the drawing that uh, has the FET uh, pin out, but I was assuming that was top down and I was wrong. It's from the bottom. Once I sorted that out and re readjusted all the connections, boom, it worked. So thanks everybody for coming along. Give me a like, thumbs up and subscribe. I would be very happy about that. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.